Hello there guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again for another edition of Let's Talk Chelsea. Hope you're all doing well and keeping safe on this Tuesday. Going to be talking in today's episode about Edouard Mendy, Chelsea's potential next signing. But before we get into any of that, I want to ask you guys, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Also, do me a favor by hitting that like button if you're enjoying the content because it helps out the channel as well. You really cannot stay away from your phone for about five minutes at the moment regarding Chelsea transfers Chelsea just not stopping in this transfer window even though they've got Timo Werner they've got Ziyech they've got Chilwell they've got Silva they've got Havertz they want more they still want about two signings and I've got to give credit to Simon Johnson I was listening to him on a straight out of Cobham podcast the Athletic Chelsea podcast and he was saying uh, yesterday that Chelsea were probably still going to make about two signings they're going to try to make a goalkeeper signing and maybe a central defensive midfield signing which I'll talk about later in the video because I think that is very interesting as well regarding that position and then Simon Johnson about an hour after listening to that podcast for me broke this story yesterday Chelsea close to signing goalkeeper Edward Mendy in the Athletic Chelsea are increasingly confident they are on the verge of agreeing a deal with Ren for goalkeeper Mendy which will take their spending on new players this summer closer to the 250 million mark sources have told the Athletic talks are progressing well one insider claimed that Mendy is expected to arrive at Stamford Bridge within days or the next few weeks Chelsea have considered a number of goalkeepers to buy over the summer including Jan or Black Andre Onana and Nick Pope. Significantly, as a big admirer in Chelsea's former keeper, Petr Cech, who now acts as the club's technical and performance advisor, Cech has a good relationship with Wren, having played there between 2002 and 2004 before joining Chelsea, and that is helping with the process of getting a deal done. And as well, Matt Law, Fabrizio Romano and Jacob Steinberg were talking about the keeper as well, so it does seem like a deal is very likely to happen now, and he will be arriving to Stamford Bridge very soon. Not a lot of people know about Edouard Mendy. I didn't before he was linked to Chelsea. He did some reading, a good scout report here from Breaking the Lines that I'll take little bits out because I thought it was interesting going into who Edward Mendy is, his strengths in his game and what Chelsea are going to be getting this season. So just little things. He was a late developer in his career in the 1920 season, as has been referenced as well by Simon Johnson. Standing at six feet, six inches tall, Mendy is a physically dominant goalkeeper with great shot stopping ability and great reflexes. He's averaged a save percentage of 79% over the past three seasons and boasts a PSXG plus of plus 6.3 over the past two seasons. PSXG is expected goals based on how likely a goalkeeper is to save a shot. In other words, he has overperformed what was expected of him over the past two seasons. Airily Mendy is very competent and not afraid to step out of his line to claim a cross. He claimed 10.2% of the crosses into his box last season, the fifth highest in league art and the 13th highest in Europe's top five leagues. 4% of the highest tally. That's more than the likes of Thibaut Courtois, Allison, Edison and Jan or Black. Mendy is also very competent when launching the ball. He completed 51.4% of his launched passes over 40 yards last season. The same tally as Edison, who is well regarded for it, and with just under twice as many attempts. That put him at number nine in Europe's top five leagues for that metric. An extremely impressive figure. In terms of ball playing, he's above average and able to do what is expected, although he's not particularly a world beater in that. His above average competence in this just about gets the job done. His positioning on the line is sometimes a mixed bag as well although it doesn't particularly get in the way of his shot stopping as he is able to use his reflexes to adjust snapshots and more very interesting scout report it goes into the detail of his career and everything I'm reading about Mendy although he may not seem like the big first choice glamour signing that some people want like a Jan or Black even an Andre Onana from my ex that we've talked about in the past I look at certain things for me dominance height physicality presence all things Kepa lacked last season Chelsea did not have um, and I think for me that that's a big part of it I think it's similar to centre-back for Chelsea who's going to dominate that area what presence do Chelsea lack what presence do Chelsea need danger awareness which is something we lacked at centre-back but also at goalkeeper the chemistry between goalkeeper and defence and I do think it's interesting that of course we were thinking about Thiago Silva coming in and maybe a language barrier of course Kurt Zuma back there Thiago Silva can speak French as well and Edouard Mendy in goal as well of course has played in the French League too so I think that could be a, a decent chemistry back there as well if you're thinking about it early on for Chelsea him settling into life at Stamford Bridge it does seem to be 18 million in the fee which I think is a decent fee to be honest in the current market in a problem position for Chelsea they needed to strengthen and even if it is a short term signing for this season and Chelsea go back in next summer say for a Jan or Black when that's sort of the priority position I still think it's a decent move for Chelsea I really do and expected Chelsea an account I always shout out on 
on this channel was talking about Edward Mendy. I referenced his tweet about Mendy last week. He says here, Edward Mendy's cross collection is a huge positive and will help us massively in the way we defend. Not only is he tall, he's also pretty fast off his line for a player of his size. A very proactive goalkeeper, exactly the kind of profile we need for now. It is also another proactive deal by Chelsea and something that's been talked about when Chelsea have been signing all these attacking players like Havertz, like Werner, is a criticism from outside the club going, well, Chelsea, why are they spending all this money on attacking players when what they really need is a goalkeeper? Well, that will shut that talk down instantly now because Chelsea have gone out there and addressed this situation. So hopefully the deal will get done pretty soon and it will be announced. And just on top of this, I just want to address uh, Declan Rice um, because in Simon Johnson's article, as well as uh, Matt Law's article, it does reference Chelsea's interest in West Ham's Declan Rice, uh, who remains on the wish list, although he was originally lined up for his ability to play at the back as well as in the centre. That's from Simon Johnson's article. And as well, Chelsea had Lille Samar watch during the campaign and their club president, Gerard Lopez, has confirmed he is prepared to sell the 21-year-old. So that does seem like a long-term target in the same position as Declan Rice. But Declan Rice, I mean, he is a name that continues to pop up for Chelsea. I think I'll just quit playing career mode if Chelsea signed Declan Rice as well um, because it just would be the most insane transfer window. I'm still going to stick to my guns. Not in sort of, of course, I'd love it if Chelsea signed Declan Rice, but I still think it will be a stretch too far this summer. I just think based on what West Ham will want. I think West Ham are in a lot of trouble right now and I think their fans are very hostile towards their owners and I just cannot see that deal getting done. I still do think Declan Rice will be a Chelsea player eventually. I think the deal is almost inevitable. I think he would be willing to come back to Stamford Bridge. Chelsea very clearly want the player. I just wonder whether this window is realistic. But there is a concern of balancing Chelsea central midfield. Of course, we've got N'Golo Kante, but it's just a concern of transitions, of structure in that midfield and probably that's something Chelsea are concerned about and Frank Lampard is clearly concerned about but will he be able to get his target but it does seem like Chelsea as Simon Johnson pointed out want two new players and one of those is going to be Edouard Mendy just another thing before we wrap up today's video Ethan Ampadu's loan confirmed to Sheffield United for the season. Talked about Ethan Ampadu a lot in yesterday's video, my opinions on the loan, but it was interesting to see it confirmed so quickly. I think it's a good loan move. I think Chris Wilder, very impressive coach, had such a good season there last year, and I think he'll get a lot of playing time uh, for Sheffield United this year, and hopefully that'll be great for his development so he can return to Chelsea in 12 months and maybe break into the first team. But that is it for today's edition of Let's Talk Chelsea. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch it. If you did enjoy it, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Follow me on Twitter at Son of Chelsea and I'll see you again. <laughs>